The best way to listen to the best of the week is on the Relevant Radio app, free and always free. Download and share the number one free Catholic app today in the App Store. It should come as no surprise that the Catholic Church's view on marriage is often in stark contrast with a contemporary secular view, but it also is the fullest, richest, and most beautiful understanding of the union of husband and wife. Joining us as our spiritual director today is Father Peter Arminio, a priest of Opus Dei and a widely sought speaker in his ministry of preaching retreats and days of recollection. Welcome back to the program, Father. How are you today? Great, and great to be back, and great to talk about this uh, key topic throughout the history of the Church, but especially during these contemporary times. One of the ways that the Catholic Church's view of marriage differs from society at large, the Catholic Church has a very is committed to this idea of husband and wife must both be committed, or at least open, to life. Yes. Why don't you take us into that a little bit, Father, because I think that is a controversial teaching of the Church in society these days. What does it mean, and why is it important? A very controversial, and a lot of our moral ills or uh, that we are experiencing in our culture here stem from either an ignorance or a misguided idea of marriage and human sexual expression within marriage. To summarize it in a very excessively cursory way, John Paul, in his uh, celebrated book, uh, it's not exactly, you know, relaxing Sunday afternoon reading, but it's a beautiful book, and it says so much, uh, Love and Responsibility, and then his teachings on theology of the body. He said that the marital act is an expression, must be an expression of total gift of self to the other. Right. All right, so that has to be there. That's why any sexual expression outside of the realm of marriage is wrong, not because there's anything wrong with human sexual expression. It's because it's sacred and it's connected with a sacred bond. All right, part of that total self-giving is to be open to, at least implicitly, open to the purpose of marital union. The main purpose, not the only purpose, but the main purpose is to generate new life, which is a personification of the love of the husband and the wife. St. John Paul will say, whether you will that or not, intend that or not, when that end is shifted to another reason, I don't know, whatever the reason is, and does not include, at least implicitly, that openness to the purpose of marital union, that person becomes an object. Hmm. And I remember many years ago when I'd first been ordained, and I learned moral theology in Rome and all that, and my professor said, you know, if you're going to do some marriage counseling, check that out. And I was really scared to check that out because the guy was my friend. He says marriage wasn't really working that well. And, you know, he started to become more spiritual. And, you know, I didn't know his wife, and he kind of, you know, he was negative about his wife in the sense that, you know, she's not serious about her faith, and the marriage was not a happy marriage. And they came over to my house. I was a young man. She didn't talk. And then I said, well, let me just uh, muster up some courage and do what my professor told me. I said, are you using contraceptives? And she started sobbing and sobbing and sobbing. This is one case. Okay. And she says, I feel I'm being used. And she was no theologian, mm -hmm. but that touched a raw nerve. And then I said, okay, now I know what the problem is. I, mean, I told my friend, you know, your, your, your wife is becoming your object. That's a part, of the, and there's all sorts of ramifications of that, but I think essentially for the expression of, of marital love to be an expression of total self-giving, it has to be implicitly open to life. Uh, the structure has to be open to life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, <clears throat> controversial as we said, but uh, it, yes. I, the deeper you get into it, especially as you were saying, as you, as you call on the wisdom of Pope St. John Paul II, the more you can understand more and more why this is just an essential part of marriage is the openness to life. And it blesses the marriage in so many ways that I think couples are, it's, even if they didn't go into the marriage where they're thinking, okay, but they agree to abide by it, I think a lot of them would then say, you know what, our marriage was really blessed because we were, it takes courage, but we were courageous well, enough to be open it to it. It does, and it's yeah. countercultural, but you know, yeah. That, yeah, you know, it is. doesn't yeah. mean it's not true. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In fact, sometimes it might be a little evidence exactly. of it being true, yeah, right. Th there okay. you go, there you go. <laughs> This entire episode of The Inner Life is on the Relevant Radio app. 
The Relevant Radio app is completely free and updated daily with fresh articles, podcasts, and prayers. Don't delay. Download the app today. And thanks for listening.